In every tower defense game, some towers are better than others. Shocking, I know. Sometimes, that might be because of an oversight by the original creators, and sometimes, there was never balance intended in the first place. The Brutal Mode EX Plus mod has its fair share of imbalanced plants, where some are astoundingly powerful, and some are outright unviable, straight into garbage tier. It's time we conclude things at Brutal Mode EX Plus with yet another tier list. As for only evos, I got stuck at 6-2 and I can't be bothered to play 19 more levels of pain, so that's done for. Without further ado, let's get straight into the tier list. I will not include these plants in my tier list, as they do two specific things and are too unique from other plants, so they aren't comparable to other plants. For the worst plant in Brutal Mode EX Plus, this title goes to Sea Shroom which is earth-shatteringly useless in this mod, as it retains its slow recharge from the original game. Its slow recharge makes it so we cannot spam them for free damage or stalling. It might be useful to defend early on, but like, why even bother using Sea Shroom when zombies don't even appear in the water early? Plus, any other plant will be more useful than Sea Shroom later on in the level, instead of wasting a slot in your loadout. Don't use Sea Shroom, please. Flip Tea is one of the worst plants in Brutal Mode EX Plus because it's terrible on virtually every level. It now shoots two snow peas backwards, so that's an improvement from vanilla, right? Well, there's no reason to invest 175 cents to exclusively deal with digger zombies in one lane when I can't tell deals with them in every lane whenever we needed to. So we're not using the split pea for digger zombies. But it now also shoots flaming peas forwards, which sounds great. It's a 175 cent for a fire pea shooter, which is exactly the problem because its fire attacks negate slowdown effects. So you can't even take advantage of the best plants like Blover if you're using split pea. Since none of what it does is desirable for us, it's going into F tier for being useless. The final F tier plant is Gatling P. Simply put, Gatling P is a 250 sun upgrade to double one repeater's damage. Why even bother? Support plants like Plantern, Torchwood, and even Snow P effectively double the damage of not only just one plant, but an entire lane or even a group of plants for much cheaper and are also compatible with not just repeaters, which aren't even that good compared to all the other attacking plants. Don't even bother with Gatling P. It's an easy F tier. Torchwood is like if Plantern was really bad, where you can only buff one lane of pea shooters instead of eight different plants, and prevent yourself from being able to use any stalling plants. There's no real reason to even use Torchwood strategies in Survival Endless when you only have free save columns. It's still kind of usable before you unlock Plantern, but no point using it after level 4 too. The sad, good old pea shooter. Just like in the base game, you use pea shooter for 8 levels straight, then immediately dump it because repeater is better at accomplishing the same role. Although pea shooter received the massive buff that allows it to gain additional attack speed over time, making it the most cost efficient single target plant in the game, it didn't manage to make it a viable early game plant because it still doesn't do enough damage. It can only barely get by beating a 2 flag level when supported by snow pea, so don't have any hopes of getting past the 3 flag level with pea shooter as your main DPS. Cabbage Pole has a similar story to the Pea Shooter, as it now also fires faster for every Cabbage lobbed. You could even argue that it's more limited than what Pea Shooter is because by the time you unlock Cabbage Pole, you already have all the tools necessary to defend without it. You could just use Chomper and Talna for roof levels and you'd be fine, as evidenced by what I did to beat level 5-1 and 5-2. However, I'm ranking it just above Pea Shooter as Cabbage Pole Planter Spam is a viable strategy, as proven in Go with the Flow, which primarily showcases Cabbage Pole by sending newspaper zombies in a level where wall plants cannot be used, forcing us to kill them using Cabbage Pole instead. It took us 4 live streams worth of attempts to survive with free flags with Cabbage Pole and all the support in the game. So would it be smarter at every other level to use Melon Pole instead? Well, I'm sure we all know the answer to that question. Okay, and here's Colonel Pole. I'm getting tired of repeating myself, but all these 100 sun attacking plants suck because they cannot deal enough damage to deal with the high health zombies in this mod. Colonel Pole is even worse than Cabbage Pole because they deal even less damage and allow Gramophone or Pumpkin zombies to heal up zombies even more. So why did I even put Colonel Pole above Cabbage Pole? It shouldn't be higher, but it's used more than Cabbage Pole because of Cop Cannon only, so there's that. It might seem surprising that Spike Rock is ranked so low on this tier list, but can you think of why you would ever use Spike Rock in Brutal Mode EX Plus? Well, that's the kills on Bonies, and exclusively that only, because their damage is not enough to compensate for a hefty price tag of 225 sun in this mod. Additionally, using Spike Rock as your main DPS is not viable in Brutal Mode EX Plus, since Letterhead Zombies are in every level of the game. 
they would walk over to Spike Rock and be gone after 2 seconds, rendering it pretty useless. If we want to use Spike Rock, we will need another attacking plant to deal with Letterhead zombies anyway, making it pointless to even consider Spike Rock in the first place. Due to the reasons as mentioned, Spike Weed is considered just as bad as Spike Rocks in Brutal Mode EX+. However, they gain a slight advantage on the tier list because they are good in two levels, which is level 3-7 and 3-9. In these two levels, our main damage sources are mainly from just spamming a repeater and nothing else, as we don't have access to more efficient plants like Doomshroom or Planter yet. So, Spike Weeds can efficiently kill off the extremely deadly Zombonis that pose a massive threat to our wall plants at these levels. However, in every subsequent level where there are Zombonis, Spike Weeds are simply inferior to just using a Doomstream to take care of business for us. There is one more level where Spike Weed and Spike Rock are used, which is against Dr. Newspaper as we want to stop the first wave of Zombonis that spawn before we can wake up our plants, but I've not seen any success of Spike Weed past that other than in Bob's Slap Bonanza. Beam shrooms with an infinite range that cost 125 sun were literally S tier in the original Brooder mode. Here, it costs us 100 sun only, has infinite range, and is one of the worst plants in the game. Why so? It all boils down to what zombies we need to deal with. In Brooder mode EX+, there are letterhead zombies and gramophone zombies at practically every level, making high damage plants much more crucial to burst them down. To get an equivalent amount of damage as repeaters to burst down letterheads and gramophone zombies, you will need a fume shroom and a planter, which is quite pricey during daytime. Using them at night is also pointless because scarity shroom is much better for DPS. They also deal too little damage to deal with cone epi shooter zombie levels, so it's basically inferior to every other strategy in practically every area of the game, and only useful in the case where we need to supplement the dumb strategy by using fume shrooms to take out jack in the box zombies, precisely in one level only. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. Gloom Shroom sees itself in D tier despite not receiving any changes from vanilla. The main reason it's not that good in Brutal Mode EX Plus is it's not as flexible as the dumb strategy. The amount of setup you need is basically the same as in the dumb strategy, either a column of wall plants to hold zombies in place or garlics to divert zombies into empty lanes. There's no real reason to choose Gloom Shroom over spamming instant kills at that point. It's also not as good as Melon Pulse as a DPS option. That might not make much sense since Gloom Shrooms are more cost efficient than Melon Pulse. However, Gloom Shrooms are worse as they cannot be buffed by Planter, so Melon Pulse actually come out on top for both cost and space efficiency with Planter in consideration. Additionally, they are no longer used to kill Digger Zombies as Tallnuts will do that job for us. They also can't be used in Endless thanks to Zombonis freezing them. We just don't need Gloom Shroom anymore, so it sees itself in a much lower tier. Hypno Shroom is still pretty pointless in Brood Mode EX+. Why use Hypno Shroom if paying 50 more sun allows you to nuke the entire board? The only scenario where Hypno Shroom is better is to use it as your early game defense against football zombies during nighttime. Having only one scenario where you perform slightly better than Squash or Potato Mine is too niche for me to rank Hypno Shroom any higher than D tier. Hop Cannon is not a good plant in Brutal Mode EX+, as it doesn't actually output enough damage to be better than the typical plants from strategies. Even in levels where Cop Cannon would usually shine like Unsodded, it is outclassed by the Free Peter plant turn strategy that is more cost efficient and easier to use. However, it is indeed optimal in one specific game mode of the game, Survival Endless. In my Endless mode setup, I use one Cop Cannon in the water as we only need one Winter Melon buff by Plant Room to defend the water lane, leaving three extra safe tiles to plant on that are never affected by Bungie and where Cop Cannon can snugly fit there as a supporting instant kill plant, but that's as far as I can go. Any Cop Cannons in other places on the lawn are at risk of getting instantly killed by any Bungie Ambush Zombies. This makes Cop Cannon one of the most niche plants in the game that is still optimal in a certain game mode. Cactus now costs 175 sun and shoots twice as much, making it as powerful as a vanilla repeater. This makes it a legitimate pick on day or night levels where we have no access to cattail, as it is cheaper than using 4 blovers to deal with a cloud zombie. Buffing it with planter essentially makes it a 175 sun gatling P that also takes out balloon zombies. However, in pool and fog, cactus still falls short of cattails as cattails are more flexible and do 27% more damage for only 50 more sun. Though cactus is now preferred over blover to deal with balloon zombies, I'd have to justify them in D tier, considering they are usable outside of their niche, as you would never voluntarily use cactus over repeater. 
Mari Gold now has a purpose in Brutal Mode EX Plus, shrinking zombies in a 3 times 3 area and cutting their health down by 75%. It's a great plan against Giga Gargantuars, but that's about it. It's simply a worse cherry bomb against everything that dies in one instant kill. Even in the levels of Gargantuars or Football Zombies, we prefer to just use Cherry Bomb, considering it would still take one more instant kill to kill them regardless of us picking Marigold. It sees use in only very few limited levels, and unfortunately, it's too niche to go anywhere but D tier. Despite me referencing Repeater a lot, it's still not a very good plan because it's just an average plan. It's fine, does enough damage to not instantly lose against Letterheads, and that's about it. There's no particular advantages or disadvantages to using it, but it just won't be as good as the best attacking plants because Repeater is simply less cost efficient. Gold Magnet is actually not that bad in Brutal Mode EX+. As first showcased on level 5-4, Gold Magnet is the king of the early game as it can unconditionally take out an unlimited amount of Conehead zombies. Cheap and easy to set up. Its benefit mostly comes from when you want to use Magnet Shroom in a level, and you can bring Gold Magnet to tag along for an efficient early game defense. However, we later found out that Gold Magnet in the Tallnut variation of the dumb strategy is inferior to just using Blover to stall out zombies. Although it costs more in the early game, it is more consistently useful against a wide variety of threats later on in the level. It's sad how restrictive Gold Magnet is, as it cannot be used in levels of Pole Vaulters, Gorgantuars, or Vehicles. So it is only usable in a few levels. Snow Peas essentially double any damage output in your lane, because slowdown causes zombies to move twice as slowly. They may seem very good at first glance, but are completely outclassed by either Blover or Winter Melons. The best strategies in this game are Melon Planter Spam or Doomshroom with Blover Spam. Do you see the issue here? Why would I ever choose Snow Pea if the two best strategies in the game already easily help me build into slowing options? Well, you may say Snow Pea would be great in levels where we don't use Melon Pulse or the Dumb Strategy. Unfortunately, these type of levels are few and far between. Even without the Dumb Strategy, Blover and Ice Room outclass Snow Pea completely as a stalling option because they are a free get out of jail free card in most situations, where Snow Pea can only accomplish one goal, slow down the front zombie. Sadly, it's just not as flexible as our other options. So, Walnut. It's hard to rate this plan because I don't use it much after much more experience playing this mod. It's obvious that Tallnut heavily outclasses Walnut in Brutal Mode EX Plus thanks to their passive healing ability. However, it's necessary for the first two worlds where no other wall plants are available. So much so, that we actually used Walnut every single level until level 34. By then, I realized that Walnut was inferior to Scarity Stream for stalling. Though it is much more health per stun efficient, it is less flexible because of its slow recharge, and we often just need more health on the board at once to slow down East Paper Zombies. Other than that, Walnuts also proved to be much worse than they would be on paper because of the dominant garlic strategies that completely avoid even having to use wall plants in the first place. Not much reason to use walnuts anymore to protect plants from some botany peas if you can just let them shoot all those peas into nothing. Magnus Shroom sits on a fine line between being good and bad simultaneously. It's kind of like the 11th plant of a loadout. It's always nice to have when you can spare the slots for it after bringing everything else. Stopping ladder zombies or making bucketheads easier to kill is a sure way to lock in a win on many levels. Yet, it's also unnecessary a lot of times, because it's just a win more plan after you've already gotten a good enough defense as it can't kill zombies on its own. Since it's not a necessity to beat any particular level, I can't find myself rating this plant any higher than C tier, despite it being a commonly used plant. Jalapeno isn't bad because it's a great way to deal with Zombonis, yet you would never pick it over Cherry Bomb or Potato Mine in most scenarios. It doesn't have the benefit of Cherry Bomb killing almost half of an entire wave, but it's also not cheap like Potato Mine or Squash. It's situated like the middle child of the family. You're not the oldest, but also not the youngest, so you get forgotten about. It's just another 11 soft plant because there's no real reason to pick up Jalapeno before already having all Cherry Bomb, Squash, and Potato Mine. However, Jalapeno is commonly utilized in Endless because it doesn't get frozen by Zombonis, making that one off, if not the only scenario where it is a better alternative to Cherry Bomb. Ultimately, it's not nearly as flexible as the upcoming plants in B tier, so it will have to sit right next to our other 11th slot plant on the tier list. Starfruit used to be the best attacking plant in the game before its nerf, which made it less potent in both damage and utility. Before its nerf, Starfruits dealt more damage than anything in the game for its cost and was consistently good throughout the game. 
Nowadays, it doesn't quite do enough single target damage to do well on its own and is no longer dominant compared to Melon Pulse. Though not as effective on their own, Starfruit shines when combined with Free Peters as they both cover each other's weaknesses. Starfruit is cost efficient, but can only target a certain area, and Free Peters are cost inefficient, but reliable at outputting consistent damage. This combo was first used to beat Unsotted, as we needed both Free Peter and Starfruit combined to do enough damage against zombies that are in unplantable rows. I quickly discarded it in favor of Melon Spam on other levels, but this strategy would have probably performed just as well because we know just this small amount of plants can actually deal with the density of 4 flags. So even though I haven't used Starfruit much after its nerf, I think it's still worthy of being put into B tier. And I don't think there's any other suitable position to place Free Peter on the tier list other than right next to Starfruit. There's practically no situation to use Starfruit or Free Peter independently of each other, so I'll just put the two plants together on the tier list. Tangle Kilp is a fantastic plant. Costing only 50 sun, Tangle Kilp unconditionally kills free zombies in the water. Although effective at handling amphibious zombies, since it's downright useless outside of it restricts how often I will choose Tangle Kilp my loadout. Zombies also only show up in the water lanes after 5 waves, making its role as a cheap instant kill less essential, as we already have enough economy to start getting permanent defense when we can utilize it. However, they remain the best counters against Lilypad Snorkel Zombies, so in levels that we do have to pick them because of Snorkel Zombies, we can take advantage of their cost efficiency and greed more, as well as kill any amphibious threats like Gatling P Zombies for cheap. Overall, it's a powerful plant that would perform well in many circumstances, but it's nothing game-breaking. At the cost of only 75 sun, Scarity Shroom is a versatile plant that is an excellent choice in any part of the game. Not only is it the most cost-efficient offensive plant at night, as it deals as much damage as repeaters now, but it can also be used as a fast cooldown wall plant as it has 1500 health, making it even viable while sleeping in daytime. Scarity Shroom finds its best use as the cheap offensive plant that can even turn into the main DPS option when paired with plant turns, while also being able to block off newspaper zombies in daytime thanks to its fast cooldown. The only thing holding Scarity Shroom back from being top tier is that Tall Nut heavily outclasses all wall plants. After Tallnut is unlocked, there's no practical reason to keep using Scarity Shroom as a wall plant anymore, but it's still a great DPS option at night, Still, it still finds uses in many levels. Proper received a monumental change in Brutimal EX Plus that makes it one of the better plants. The time it takes to digest a zombie now scales with how much health it has. No longer do we have to wait 42 seconds for it to kill one basic zombie, because it's now done after only 12 seconds. This change single-handedly made Chopper widely applicable in a wide variety of strategies. It can be used as the main DPS option in a level of newspaper zombies to kill them without angering them, it can be used as a fast cooldown instant kill that supplements garlic strategies to kill zombonies, it can be used as a plant that helps you take out letterhead zombies, and the list goes on! Its versatility is unmatched by most plants in the game simply thanks to how powerful its ability to one-shot problematic zombies is, completely evading all healers. This makes Chomper one of the strongest plants in the game, being the first A-tier plant. Puffstrom is buffed in the original game, now gaining a 23% chance to free zombies upon death. However, why is it not just an S-tier plant? This is because Puffstreams cannot consistently kill off all basics and conets in the early game anymore because of gramophone zombies. Their constant healing means that even 8 Puffstreams lined up in a row won't be enough to kill them. In fact, you can't with infinite Puffstreams because their healing is stronger than whatever damage free Puffstreams can output at once. With conets in practically every level of the game, Puffstream often falls short in the early game and is replaced by instant kills or cattail which can burst down gramophone zombies with its critical hit ability. Additionally, Puffstreams are ineffective at handling Conan P-Shooter zombie levels due to the increased health of zombies that we have to contend with. This doesn't make Puffstream a bad plan though, because it still kills off all other basics and Conan if you just restart and reroll for better RNG and still get through the early game easily with just Puffstreams. It's also still very strong to distract Gargantors or Squash Zombies, so Puffstream is still a good plan though not as good as in the base game. Garlic went from a zero to a hero in Brutamode EX+. I always thought of Garlic as this gimmicky plant where you use plants that do group damage against zombies diverting into the same lane, but after playing this mod, it has revolutionized my mindset towards Garlic. It's a plant that amplifies our economy by opening up previously unsafe tiles and protecting them cheaply early on. We can plant more sun producers with more space, making everything more affordable. This makes Garlic a powerful enabler of expensive strategies, such as the dumb strategy, as we can now simply ignore the early game by utilizing lawnmowers while building an economy large enough to sustain spamming instant kills indefinitely. 
This is also applicable while setting up endless setups that require my entire life savings to plan. That's not to mention that its ability to divert zombies become ever more critical because of Conan P-Shooter zombies. It just simplifies dealing with them if they are diverted into empty lanes with nothing to shoot at. Versatile in multiple situations, garlic is definitely a powerful plant if used correctly. Ice Shroom is a fantastic stalling plant. If just Doom Shroom isn't enough, Ice Shroom will make Doom Shroom twice as potent thanks to it stalling a wave long enough to clump up the next wave together. This is utilized in Endless because there's not much space to plant Doom Shrooms due to its crater, so using Imitated Ice Shroom is basically making each Doom Shroom 3 times better. It's also very strong in the dumb strategy for the same reason. Additionally, Ice Shroom is the best counter to target zombies as instant killing them while they're frozen will prevent the bungee ambush. Being rather cheap as well, Ice Shroom is consistently a good plant throughout the entire game. Pumpkins are amongst one of the best plants in Brutal Mode EX+. They cost 200 sun instead of 125, but it's now also a cherry bomb upon death. Though its applications are not immediately obvious, Pumpkin is an incredibly versatile plant with many use cases. It's only 50 sun more than cherry bomb, so we can just treat it as another powerful plant in the dumb strategy, a stalling plant and an instant kill plant combined. It also protects tall nuts in two ways. It can protect a tall nut from being eaten and let it heal back up and deal with ladder zombies if you plant them behind your walnut and kill both the ladder zombie and the ladder. Most importantly, it protects your backlines from imps and gatling pea zombies from the side. If only tall nut wasn't as good as it is, pumpkin would have easily gone in S tier as the best wall plant in Brutal Mode EX+. Melon Pole undisputably is the best offensive plant because of its buff to lob a melon to every zombie in its row 9% of the time. It seems like an insignificant buff, but if you have 10 zombies in one row, that 9% chance suddenly multiplies your damage by more than 10 times because each melon will splash onto each nearby zombie in the same lane. And it scales upwards very quickly like in Survival Endless. You're basically lobbing 30 melons at once now and instantly killing most zombies by just the splash damage you're doing. It gets more ridiculous when you get plants to buff them, since that doubles whatever your melon pool is already doing. Moreover, you can upgrade Melon Pole to Winter Melons, which increases the chance of flopping a melon to every zombie from 9% to 17%, and you get the board wide slowing permanently. This is just getting insane how crazily broken Melon Pole is compared to everything else. There isn't any other attacking plant close to as powerful as Melon Pole, so it's the highest ranked attacking plant on the tier list alongside Winter Melon. Cherry Bomb is the most generically good explosive plant. There's not a level where Cherry Bomb is bad because, well, it's Cherry Bomb. It's a plant that can clear out a large horde of anything you need to be dead instantaneously, and it's very good at doing just that. Do you have any spare slots to use? Just bring Cherry Bomb to tag along. There's no problem Cherry Bomb cannot solve, so it's a straightforward high A tier for me. Squash is even better than in the base game, since it has a 27% chance after squashing to stay alive to squash again. It's a simple, instant kill that can kill off any stray threats for a very cheap cost, like in vanilla. And it retains its purpose here, being consistently one of the best plants throughout the game. There's pretty much no reason to not use squash in your loadout unless you're giving yourself a harder time, but well, it does have an alternative. This alternative is the potato mine. Its function is almost identical to squash in this mod, having no arming time and instead instantly exploding 3 tiles of zombies. Potato mine is essentially interchangeable with squash, so usually choosing either will have no significant impact. So why is potato mine ranked higher? Potato mine, unlike squash, is immune to Zombodies freezing, allowing potato mine to kill off Zombodies and squash cannot, which is pretty much the only advantage making potato mine better and differentiating it from squash. This makes potato mine usable and endless while squash can only be used when there are no Zombonies, so potato mine is marginally better. Okay, so I lied when I said melon pole is the best offensive plant, because I'm ranking Cattail as the first S tier plant. The fact it can target any lane at once is already an immense upside because you don't need to keep buying more plants for each lane in the early game, saving a lot of sun. But most importantly, it retargets to its closest target, allowing Cattails to easily deal with ambush zombies like Letterheads and Angry Dancers. This allows them to become useful later on instead of becoming obsolete like most early game plants. They also have a critical hit ability that allows 3% of their projectiles to deal 10 times more damage, making it easier to beat down gramophone zombies quickly. Cattail can fit into every strategy you can think of. Melon Pulse strategies when you're saving up for Melon Pulse, cleaning up stray zombies in a dumb strategy, a reliable balloon zombie counter in Endless, even in levels you can't see anything as a way to automatically target onto the strongest zombies and kill them, there's simply no scenario where Cattail is bad, making Cattail the first plant that lands a spot in the S tier. Plantern is unsurprisingly in S tier. You only need to pay 150 sun, and it doubles the damage of whatever you put around it. 
You don't even have to be a math genius to figure out that if you place a 200 some plant like a repeater next to a planter, it's more cost efficient than getting two repeaters or a gatling pea. For this reason, it's a no brainer to always bring planter if you have any attacking plant. Doesn't matter if it's melon pulse, star fruits, cattails, fume shrooms, you bring in planter. As a complementary auto include plant in every loadout that contains an attacking plant, there's pretty much no place to put planter other than in S tier. Tallnut has been mentioned whenever the topic of wall plants come up, and that's because Tallnuts are insanely overpowered for only 150 sun. It already has double the health of a walnut, but on top of that, Tallnut also constantly heals itself up and does damage to any zombies eating it. This healing ability made Tallnut the best wall plant because its passive healing means that as one zombie feeding on it dies, by the time the next one arrives, it has likely regenerated all of its health back already. This cycle continues, making it nearly indestructible against individual zombies, as Tallnut will also kill the zombies that are feeding on it. It's as overpowered on paper as it is in practice, making Tallnut the go-to wall plant in every scenario. That is without consideration that it also blocks pole vaulters, dolphin riders, pogo zombies, and digger zombies, reliably kills newspaper zombies, and survives 4 gorgantor hits. Need I say more to convince you that this plant is absolutely bonkers against everything? Depending on what you call it, Blover or Hurricane is only short one spot of being the best plant. If you're about to lose, Blover will save your ass from losing. If a melon pole is about to die, just Blover to push away whatever zombie is eating it. It's a bailout plant for every scenario since it has fast recharge, so you can just infinite stall any zombie by repeatedly planting Blover. This is single-handedly the most effective plant on the dumb strategy, allowing us to stall any zombies long enough until Doomstream comes back from recharge. It's a plant that suits every strategy in the game already, does 60 damage to all zombies when planted, and slows down all zombies on the screen. No support plant is better than Blover with how much it has to offer. There's genuinely no level where you would not want to use Blover, so for that reason, it's the second best plant in the game. You fought 125 sun bailout in one lane and slowed down all zombies was overpowered? What about a plant that costs 150 sun and kills every zombie on the screen? Is there more to say about why Doomstream is the best plant in Brutal Mode EX Plus? No zombie stands in the way of Doomstream, and spamming it is the best way to beat most levels in the game because of how absurd it is. It throws any meticulous strategy required to deal with most zombies out of the window by instantly eliminating every zombie. Doomstream may be the only reason why Brutal Mode EX Plus is even beatable, because I don't think you can even get past level 6-6 without Doomstreams. And there would be no way you could even stand a chance against the bucket of flag zombies in World 7, if it weren't for Doomstream to kill them all. Good luck if you want to try and beat the game without using the nuclear bomb, because it's probably not even possible. And that's it for the Brutal Mode EX Plus mod plan tier list. That's the end of Brutal Mode EX Plus, so next time, we'll make our start on an even more difficult PvD1 mod, which includes a multitude of zombies that you definitely don't want to miss. If you want some spoilers, go to the live tab here on YouTube and check out what I've been doing. Make sure to subscribe to the channel to keep up with more modded PvZ content and catch my live streams. Thank you to our channel members for supporting the RCCS channel. Consider joining as a member if you want to support me in high quality video production. For now, have a great day and I'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching Brutal Mode EX Plus.